There's the first tree to bloom, and I know what that means. Well, howdy. Welcome to Fish Tales. It's Tuesday, and it has been very warm since last Saturday. Very warm meaning very pleasant. Uh, one of the things I love about living in Texas is the fact that uh, our wintertime weather is really pleasant. Today it was probably 82 or 83. Yesterday the same thing. The water's warming up fast. And what that means is that the fish should be getting active. Real active. That's what I'm counting on. I'm out here at Lake Mary and out at the ranch. And I'm going to see if I can't catch some bass and some crappie. I'm going to double rig. I'm going to use a big hair bug that I got tied on and I'm going to tie a, a dropper to it, a smaller fly intended, intended to catch the small bass and crappie. I'm going to keep the crappie and hopefully I'll catch enough of them to make for a meal for the uh, ranch owners. So I'll be cleaning fish this evening. I've got about two hours of fishing, maybe an hour and 45 minutes. So if it's going to happen, it's going to need to happen pretty quick. Stay tuned and stay with me. We're gonna get it done. I'm gonna use my canoe. No weight for no weight fishing for today. Just need my basket. Leave my bucket here. Basket. I'm gonna take a fly rod. I'll take my other rod because it's easy. Drag this thing down to the water. I use this thing backwards when I'm fishing by myself. Plenty of room. We'll I'll see how this new rig works. <laughs> Camera rig, that is. Just let the thing go where it wants to go for a moment. Let's see if I can't catch a couple of crappie to get the day started. I've done this in a while. Standing up in a canoe. My anchor's not holding me either. Alright, well, we're gonna have to sit down. That's alright, I can do this either way. Get it on camera. Ooh, whoa, there we go. Nice bass right off the bat. Boy, these hair bugs, they just work, man. Ooh, nice fish. Now, if my boat will cooperate just a little bit and hold me off of these weeds, I should be able to repeat that about a dozen times tonight. I'll say, oh, all right, dude. Thanks for coming. And you know the drill. Tell your mama I'm here. Bye. Thanks for coming. Now that my anchor seems to be holding, I need to turn this canoe into a catamaran with an outrigger on it so I can stand up in it a little easier. There we go. Probably need to probe a little further back, but. Get this real good. That kind of cast is what I'm looking for. Pull that bass right out of that thick cover. I got the gear to do it. I can tell you that, man. This is 15 pound test monofilament backed up by 200 pound test leader <laughs> and whatever the fly line is. It shouldn't come unbuttoned. Just a little more daring. 
I say these things act like a water dog. This particular fly acts like a water dog, which is a salamander we have down here. I don't know how far north they go. But I'm hoping to do this all the way around the lake. I'm probably going to have to go all the way back in those weeds. Any of that structure, I'm probably going to have to go deep into it. I'm sure those fish are laying in that stuff. That's where I'd be if I was a bass. Waiting in ambush. There we go. That was a good one. Right in that little shady area. Dropped it right on the head of that log. Water's a little, oh no, it's not too bad. It looks a little stained, but I don't think it is. There we go. Probably need to make a weedless version of this fly. So I can put it way back in there. And I'll tell you what, don't give up too quickly. When you're fishing like this, you can hit the same spot 10 times before that bass will come out and pick it up. Especially if we're on a bed. It should be a little early for the bass to be on the beds. And I think I'm gonna have better luck in the upper shallow part of the lake. That was a good one. It's going to follow right along the edge of that. I need to bring my other little boat out here and turn this thing into a catamaran. It'll make it easier. It won't tippy. It won't be tippy. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's sit down and do this a little safer. I really don't want to go swimming today. Line management gets real tough as well as camera management. Oh, we got a good one. We got a good one. Just turning the boat. Oh yeah, we got a good fish. Oh, I got to hang on to him. He's coming toward me. Oh, come on fish, hang on there, hang in there. Oh, he's going under the boat. Gonna get my anchor rope. Oh, he's gonna come unbuttoned. Oh, that's a good fish. Oh yeah, nice fish. Come on, come on up. Oh, look at that boss. Look at that boss hog. Oh, it's a sow. Laying right where she's supposed to. Come here, fish. Come here, say, oh, big mama, come here. Come here. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's what I've been looking for. On a hair bug. These things are deadly. On big bass, when they're in shallow water, it's a very slow moving, lots of nice action to it, fly. That's a good five pound fish. <laughs> That's why I wanted to come out today. I know this water's warming up and these fish are moving in. All right, big mama. Thanks for coming. Oh yeah, she just wallering. That's a good five, six pound fish. That's what I've been fishing for the last few weeks. Let's see if I can't catch another one. Actually, the boat is sitting right on top of the hump that I wanted to fish. I got my dang other rig. I had it hanging out the back and it hung into the anchor rope. That's never a good thing. There's probably another good fish out in front of those two tall trees right there. Right on that point. I have missed, I have missed two good ones off that point. Let's see if I can't 
approach them today so that I can catch them. I also need to hit this area again from a little further away. All right, let's get that let's get that anchor rope. Let's get that anchor up and change position just a little bit. I can hit that cove. I can hit that point rather. Frogs really start going to town. Look at that. Big crappie. On a hair bug in deep water. I was way out here in the deep. Couldn't get the camera on because he was coming toward me. I fought funny. I knew something was different, but that's a big crappie and that one's going in the basket. It's nice to be able to stand up once in a while, stretch your legs. I was out here in deep water and a big old crappie picked it up. Hopefully he won't be the only one today. I don't really have this rigged up for crappie. It's a bass bug. It's a big old hairy bug. Big lure. Big fly. This isn't quite as exciting as watching a surface fly. But they're not going to respond to a surface fly very much. They might come up as that sun goes down. Might start seeing a little surface activity. I'll change tactics when, I, when that starts to happen. If I want to catch some crappie. But if I just want to catch a big bass, I'm sticking with this thing. I need to push my canoe a little further, closer to the point. Got crappie out there too. I don't know what it is about this side, but it seems to hold more fish. deeper water so I'm gonna let it sink a little deeper. I need to start fishing for crappie. I think I might go surface after this. Once that sun goes down and I lose the daylight I might put a popper dropper on this rig or shift in my spinning gear and start fishing the right way. Way it usually works. I got work to do on my camera rig. I need to invent something. Make this thing stay level. Don't you know that's fun? should pick up another fish right in here. I usually catch a fish in this spot. Hopefully today it'll be a big old mama fish. A big old mama bass. Try one in real close. There we go. See if anybody's hanging real shallow. I do believe that when you're fishing for big bass, you just about have to be quiet and sneaky. You're not going to run up on one. 
All that little noise I just made probably was enough to spook a bigger bass. It tips them off is what it does. It tips them off to your presence here in their environment. And it makes them nervous. This thing ain't working. Yep. I have definitely got some adjustments to make to my camera holder. This, this one has worked okay when I'm wade fishing and standing up, but sitting down, it's not working very good. I gotta make some changes. Ooh, I see a fish rolled. Sun's going down. I just saw something move a lot of water right up here. And the boat's cooperating pretty good. Should be able to get in there while standing up, which working in this working this fly rod in this canoe is a lot easier if I can stand up. I saw something move a lot of water. It was a big object underneath the water. And that probably means it's feeding. So a nice, just about that area, just about right there. Use my fly rod to steer my boat. I hope there's another one. There's something else in there deep. Right there, oh yeah. Come on, come on, hit it. Hit it. Come on. I may have to sit down for this to keep a low profile. Ooh, there's one back in the back. Ooh, this is looking good. I think I am. I think I'm gonna sit down. There we go. I think we got something chasing. I think we got something chasing it. Come on, bass. Be real careful when you're working in tight quarters like this. You can spook that fish just as easily as you can catch him. Just as easy as you can catch him, you can spook him. I'm not getting any cooperation out of my camera. Or not enough. Something moves a lot of water in here. So you also want to make sure that you've got the right, and you're using the right form. You're going to have to strip set that. You've got to be in position to strip set the hook. Come on, fish. Where are you? on this old canoe it creaks and pops and rattles a little too much Dang it. for some reason I can't get any distance out of my cast camera keeps pointing to the sky sorry about that a little one but I did catch him was that another crappie? Oh, how about that? Another crappie. I don't think that's what was moving the water when I saw it over here. I could be wrong. But that's another fish for the basket. Something really moved. I dropped that fly right back there in the sweet spot. Something moved a lot of water. 
I don't know why it didn't take the fly, but it's probably still in there. There we go. There we go. Well, that was way back in there. Come on, fish. Nail it. I'm real confident there's a fish in there. Going for a little ride. This is why you want extra strong stuff. I'm hung up in that brush, but I'm just going to pull the whole boat over there. Little by little. 15 pound monofilament at the end. 200 pound liter. <laughs> I don't know what kind of poundage the fly line is, but it's pretty tough. I've never broke it. I'll tell you what, that fly has really produced. It's got wings and everything. I think it probably looks as much like a catfish as anything else. A little yellow. Bucktail. A couple feathers. Works good. There he is. Oh, I had him right up here close. That was probably a crappie. I didn't strip set. I wasn't on the fly. I bet that was a crappie. I bet it was a crappie. Got to keep your form right. You got to keep the strip set rolling. Where that fly hit it, or where that fish hit it, and how he hit it tells me it's probably a crappie. Here's some more geese. Third flock today. All headed back north. I imagine that's a temporary thing. Another cool front will pass them back. Just barely hear them. Well, I'll tell you what. I think that's about enough for one day. Caught the big bass, one I've been looking for. That's good enough all by itself. Two crappie, two bass. And a beautiful sunset. Makes the whole day worth it. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.